Hello viewers! Is your car running rough on idle or even stalls when coming to a stop? Or it may take a lot of cranking until it actually starts and you might even need to press the throttle while doing so. Well, as with many other such annoying issues, this can be caused by a whole lot of things. But if your car is a bit older, like 10-15 years or more, there is a good chance the problem here is a misbehaving idle control valve, which controls the engine operation on takeover. Now, let me explain all this in a bit more detail. A bad idle control valve is likely to cause rough idle, stalling, fluctuations on takeover and might trigger a check engine light on the dashboard. But let's take a closer look at each of these symptoms, as this should make troubleshooting a bit easier. First, let's go with the most obvious, the check engine light that stays on all the time. As you probably know, there are tons of sensors throughout the car, so it's no surprise the idle control valve is monitored too. And as soon as something doesn't come back right, it sends a signal to the ECU to let you know there is a problem. The most common code here is a P0505, which translates as idle control system malfunction. But while this is the most common check engine code, it's not the only one that might point you toward a faulty idle control valve. Your car's idle control valve is supposed to keep everything smooth while idling, so it makes sense that if it's acting up, your idle speed is going to fluctuate. While it depends on what's wrong with the valve, a fluctuating idle speed is one of the most common symptoms. Keep in mind that your idle speed will fluctuate even more when you turn on or turn off accessories, as your ECU won't adjust to the changing loads without the idle control valve working correctly. Modern cars are very sensitive when it comes to idle, and even the slightest deviation in the amount of air it gets will most likely affect how it runs. And if the idle control valve is not working as it should, the car won't be idling ideally. Instead, it will run rough and, depending on how severe the problem is, it may even cause the other problems such as a misfire. But what's quite symptomatic is that these problems usually disappear immediately after you press the throttle, as this lets some fresh air into the intake. While on the subject of idling, we must mention that a faulty idle control valve may cause the idle to be unusually high. For instance, your car might run at 3000 RPM even with your foot being completely off the throttle. This is a clear sign that the engine is getting way more air than it should, which may, and in many cases is, caused by a defective idle control valve. More precisely, such a scenario will happen if the valve gets stuck in a fully open position, which then prevents it from properly controlling the airflow. Suppose the idle control valve's operation is way off. In that case, it'll have trouble adjusting to ever so varying driving conditions and may consequently cause the engine to stall out completely. For instance, you're driving down the road and everything seems ok, but as soon as you stop at a red light, the car cuts out. Or it may be idling fine, but only to die out on you after you turned on the aircon. That's because of a defective idle control valve that doesn't have a capability to adjust to different conditions. As we explained in one of our previous videos, the engine's speed is determined by how much the throttle body is opened, which controls the amount of air going into the intake. Obviously, when the driver presses the throttle, the plate inside the body opens up and the air rushes in. But when idling, the driver's foot is off the throttle and the throttle body is fully closed, so something else needs to moderate the airflow. And this is where the idle control valve comes into play. To put it simply, this is an ECU control valve that serves as a bypass, allowing a certain amount of air around the closed throttle body. As a result, the engine will run smooth on idle, maintaining the same revs regardless of varying loads and conditions. For instance, you might notice that your car idles a bit higher until it warms up, or that the idle speed changes a bit when the AC kicks in. All this is possible thanks to an idle control valve, which lets more air into the intake when needed. To put it simply, it takes all the variances into account and adjusts your engine's idle speed to keep everything running smoothly. It might not be the most elaborate component out there, but without it, your engine could stall, or you might have all sorts of performance issues. Newer cars mostly have a so-called fly-by-wire throttle body, whose operation, opening and closing, is controlled by the ECU. 
This more advanced configuration eliminates the need for the idle control valve, as this is done by slightly opening the throttle plate. Still, if your car has a cable operated throttle body, it's almost certain to have an idle control valve. And now let's see where to find it. In most modern cars, the idle control valve is integrated into the throttle body assembly. On older engines, this was an external unit installed somewhere around the air intake. From there, it can easily control the airflow to the engine to keep a constant idle, regardless of engine and outside conditions. But regardless of the configuration, the idle control valve will always be somewhere around the intake manifold, which narrows down its actual location and, in most cases, makes access quite simple. Ok, having determined where the idle control valve is, there's one thing you can try before replacing it, and that's giving it a good thorough cleaning. In many cases, most of the issues will be caused by carbon and dirt buildups within the valve's housing, which can easily be taken care of. In most cases, all you need are some basic tools and a can of carb cleaner, but let me guide you through the process. For a start, disconnect the vehicle's battery cable by removing the negative terminal. Then obviously, locate the idle control valve. Some valves will have hoses attached to them and if so, loosen the clamps holding them in place and remove them. Next, unplug the wiring connector, but do this carefully to avoid breaking the retaining pin. Now, using a suitable socket, undo the bolts holding the valve in place and carefully wiggle it out. With the valve out, put it on a work table and remove the gasket if it has one. Now, take a can of carbon cleaner and spray the valve thoroughly. Also, spray the carbon cleaner onto a clean rag and use it to clean the intake manifold and throttle body. With all that done, leave the valve to dry for several minutes and then refit it back in reverse order. Lastly, fire up the car and let it run for several minutes. This should be enough for the ECU to reset its position and regain full control. On average, it costs anywhere between $100 and $500 to replace the idle control valve. Keep in mind that these costs can vary depending on what you drive and where you take it for repairs. You can find an aftermarket idle control valve for 50 bucks or something like that, but it can be a couple times more if you go for a brand new OM replacement part. Meanwhile, the labor costs are usually pretty cheap, only costing between 50 and 100 dollars. This, however, means that if you are looking to save some money by doing the job yourself, you're not going to save all that much compared to overall repair costs. But on the upside, it's a straightforward job, so why wouldn't you give it a shot? And yes, if the idle valve is integrated into the throttle body, you may need to replace the whole thing, which is more costly. So there you have it, that's what might happen if the idle air control valve is faulty. I hope this video was helpful, and if so, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. But if not, and your engine is still not working right, you might have a more severe issue on your hands. So, to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicdebase.com for more detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!